May I? Uh, call may me Cher. I, may I call you Cher? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know I was going to say that? I don't know. Because everybody does. No, no, no. What does it say on your passport, come to think of it? It says Cher. And don't they say, um, pardon me, ma'am, but um, your part of your name seems to be missing. Uh, I had one problem getting into Haiti. The man was very unhappy that I didn't have a last name and made me wait and went through all of my luggage and, and, and uh, ripped open a teddy bear that I was bringing back from Australia. I guess it, uh -huh. the name just kind of inspired him to look for other things. I wasn't really sure. Why didn't you say, well, the chair is my last name? No, he, he didn't really care about anything. He just was very unhappy that I didn't have a last name because everyone who'd ever been to Tahiti had one. And he took it out on your teddy bear. Yes, he took it out on my teddy bear. Why do I associate you with lots of balls? In, in, uh, may I rephrase? <laughs> can we start this show over? No, I love it. Do you know what I'm referring All right, to? Now, if only if Please I can ask Please get me off of this show. <laughs> La Balls it, it of what? It has to do with magic, uh, Slidini. Uh, do you remember the thing we did once years ago? Yes. And Slidini did this great balls, and cups and balls yes. thing with, with you, and, <laughs> and suddenly... I'd rather sit there and watch you squirm, because this I... is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's lots of fun for me, too. You know how dumb you feel when you say something like that and realize that well over 80 people are watching? Right. <laughs> it's very scary. Speaking of scary... Uh-huh. Here, here it comes, the inevitable question, but you're about to open on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Now, are your nerves shot about this? Is it frightening, all those images, the great white way, opening night and all that jazz? Um, it's, uh, this is a very strange thing to me. We've been doing this play now. I mean, or we've been doing the play for over a week, and I understand that opening is, uh, I mean, I think that we could never open and be very successful in the play, but you have to open, and I think that's gonna make me very nervous. I probably won't be very good opening night. The, uh, the trick really, though, you're onto it, is to think of it as just another in the series That's, of... I mean, that's how it appears to me mm -hmm. that we play for an audience every night, now, and opening is just another audience, really. Yeah. I should explain, because of the phenomenon of live and tape, that as we sit here now... We probably will have You haven't been opened. Opened, opened yet, but... No. Um, as you see the show through the magic of television. Well, we will either will. be open or closed. <laughs> Those seem to be the two alternatives, don't no, they? You I can't close be... halfway, can you? Uh, the other night, Suzanne Plachette did that play and it closed in one night. I really made, I had to go no. home after that night. I was really nervous and upset. That's gotta be a staggering blow, no matter how much people claim they can yeah, handle I, it. You know, you, you become emotionally involved in something and, and, uh, and it hurts you if, you know, if mm -hmm. it's not accepted. I mean, yeah. God knows that everyone has to go through that. It ha has happened to me a whole bunch of times. Yeah. But uh, I guess it is a nightmare. If they, whoever invented opening night ought to be shot. They ought to say, <laughs> right. you do previews, and on any night within the first week, the Times critic that can would come be, if he yes. wants to. I think to, that would be wonderful. It'd be a lot easier. Maybe next week, somebody else Or can even come. any night that you just didn't know about it. But to have everybody come opening night and... Yeah. Do, you know, do that. It's a, it's a little bit upsetting. And all those telegrams and flowers and all those things that are well meant, but you don't want them to remind you. I like doing the play, though. Up. I mean, the audiences have been wonderful. I mean, it's really been exciting. I would say it's about the most exciting thing that I can remember doing. It is a thrill, isn't it? I, I did a Broadway play some years ago, and I, I couldn't wait to get to the theater every night. It was just... There's nothing like it. You can stand there and say... Also, well, if you're not doing well, it's pretty terrifying, too. Like, a couple mm -hmm. of nights, we've had, like, strange moments, and you're just out there. There's no retaking it, starting over. You just kind of have to sweat through it, and, and that's also really interesting. Well, is it true that you've never stepped on a stage before in a play? Yes. Yeah. Because I'm sure much will be made of that, but there's no reason to, really. Not really. I, I, I mean, you've been on I many felt stages. Very, yes, I felt very comfortable, and... Uh, it, it's like playing a game to me, and it, it you know, it's like playing. Mm hmm Yeah, it is. It, it's it's make-believe. Yeah, I, I always say, well, someone says, what are you doing at that time? I say, well, I'm pretending so-and-so, and everybody laughs, but that's how I feel. I mean, I'm just there doing it. I came to New York originally to take lessons um, to do a play. It didn't ever occur to me that while I was signing up to take lessons, I would get a play. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful of getting yeah. work when yes. you don't want it. Uh, <laughs> But you, you have studied acting, you've been on stages, you have presence, charisma, all I, of that. I, so it isn't as if you were some... I studied acting when I was 16 for about four months. And I came here, I had two lessons with Lee Strasberg before I got this play. And uh, I came here to do an audition for Joe Papp. And while I was doing the audition, I got a call from Bob Altman. And that was it. Strasberg's a fascinating enigma to everybody I, who I'm knows him. I'm crazy about him. 
Where did he start with you? Can you remember what his first observation he didn't, no, no, was? No. He you... didn't. You know what he said? He said, "You know too much," and walked by me. I mean, it was like, you know, someone said, "Cher is real interested in uh, in taking classes," and he said, he looked at me, he said, "You know too much," and just turned around and, and walked out of the room. He had to get something to eat. It was lunchtime, and uh, <laughs> and then that night I went to Anna Anna's house. That's his wife, and and mm -hmm. he was there, and uh, they just started telling old stories. And then the next day I just audited. I never really even got a chance to take classes by myself. I just audited the classes that he was giving, but I felt like I was learning a lot just by watching. And it isn't as if you came out of uh, a desk job to no. your first performing. Except uh, people have a very strange opinion. I'm sure that I must have contributed to this, that my uh, personal life somehow negates the fact that I might be talented, you know, because my, mm -hmm. so, I mean, so much has been written about, about what I've been doing after I've been working that a lot of people forget what it was that they liked about me originally, you know? What was, what is it that she does, you yeah. know? She gets I mean, married a lot or she, you know, she Do wears, they hold it against you that you might go to a disco or a party to unwind after? Someone said to me the other night, someone very close to me said, Cher, I don't want you to go um, to Studio 54 until after the play opens. And I said, why? And they said, well, because we want you to be serious. So I won't tell you the, fir the expletives that I said to him first, but after uh -huh. I got through telling him immediately off the top of my head what I thought of that idea, I said, you know, um, I, I am me, like it or not. You know, the people who like me and who like my work are going to like me no matter what, you know, if I go dancing or not, you know. And so I don't know I, if, if being on Broadway or if being serious means that you have to be dull or change your lifestyle, I guess I'll never be what it is that everybody wants me to be. When Henry Kissinger went to Studio 54, they didn't make him stop negotiating <laughs> or, or figure that he would go frivolously to the right. Middle East or whatever. I guess uh, I, I give the appearance of being a very frivolous person, but I think that I, uh, I, I'm capable of being very frivolous and being very uh, intense, and so I, I can just never quite stick with one too long. Yeah, and the one can relax you for the other, mm -hmm. too. There is a trap, though, in if you haven't been in a play and done everything else, almost everything else you do, you only do once and get it over with. A television show, thank God it's over and you can relax until the nightmare hits yes. you again next week if it's a weekly show. And when you do a play and get through it, you think, oh, that's over. And there's a trap to being going yes. to a late night party and then thinking, uh oh, yes. I've got I to do that it twice tomorrow. Yes, I stayed out until 7 o'clock in the morning, the night that we taped uh, Night of a Hundred Million Stars or, oh, yeah. you know, that thing. Yeah. And uh, I was just having the best time. Elizabeth Taylor and I ended up at a place called Paulson's, little teeny joint, and uh, stayed there well into the night. And I arrived home. I drove a cab home. I don't know why the cab driver let me do this, but you he just, yes. But I drove a cab home at 7 o'clock that morning and had Lord. the time of my life. But last night's performance was really difficult. Did he know you had had a little tiny joint, or did I misunderstand you? No, no, no. We went to a little joint. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> No, Paulson's is a I little know. tiny joint. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> anyway, no, and, and I, we got into this cab, and the cab driver said that he was not really a cab driver, <laughs> that he was a comedy writer, and proceeded to tell me about this. He told me a joke that he said he had written, but I'd heard it about he went to a Chinese restaurant that was Chinese German, but an hour you... after he'd eaten, he was hungry for power. <laughs> and I said, you know what? That's a terrible joke. Let me drive. He pulled over to the right, got out, and I drove back. <laughs> is, that a, is that, in fact, a terrible joke? No, I thought it was very funny. As a matter, at 7 o'clock in the morning, it was hysterical. Did someone, <laughs> did someone tell you to say this? No, I swear to God, this is what happened. Do you know why I look disturbed? You wrote that joke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my, my most stolen jokes when I was doing an act. Well, there's a club. cab driver who stole that joke. I did that joke. And it appeared the next week when some cheap comic stole my joke and did it on the Sullivan Show, and I was crushed. Did you really write that? This is very joke. funny. Yeah. I mean, that's, but that's what happened to me. Adolf Wong was the name of the proprietor of the restaurant, <laughs> and I filled on that. <laughs> and the, the proper delivery of the punchline is Chinese German food is very good. The only problem is an hour later you're hungry for power. And that's the way most of the people who stole it did it. Well, this was, a, you know, just a guy that was a Someone cab driver. Someone put you up to this. I swear to God. One really? thing you might find about me, which is bad, but I never, I always tell the truth. You're frightening honesty. Yes, yes. I'm afraid terrible. I'm going to be the victim of it at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what happened. It, it was fun. I mean, I'm having the time of my life in New York. I realize that I don't like Los Angeles very much. The only thing that I like about it is that I've never had to be there very long. Uh oh, yeah. In small, it's, it's a... 
It's, it's you a wouldn't want to live there, but it's a bad place to visit. No, it, it's fun to go there. No, I don't think I'll be going back there for a very long time, and I've lived there my entire That's life. That's right. When this show is seen, you will have a little trouble going back there. No, I mean, everyone knows. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, everybody knows, you know, my views about almost everything, so it doesn't make any difference, really. That's right. And everybody raps Los Angeles to some degree or other. What about stamina? Are you working out for this? That's eight yes. performances a week is no picnic. Yes, I go to the gym every day, except the last two days. Because uh -huh. I came here and yesterday I couldn't quite get up. <laughs> what do you specifically do at the gym? Weight? I specifically, no, I, uh, I do weights. I run for about 45 minutes. I have a girlfriend that we, we run. And we're running inside the gym now because the weather's a little bit weird. Yeah. And uh, then I do Nautilus, which is not my favorite thing to do. I much prefer free weights. At home, I've got a wonderful gym, and I've got like Paramount equipment, which is really wonderful. Oh, free weights. Yes, free weights. I'm oh, sorry, I think you said free weights. No, free uh, weights. To run free weights, as opposed to oh, machines. Machines, yeah. 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 Now, do women develop muscles? Sure, if you want. The way them. men do. No, not the way men do, because just your body's not set up that way. But you can develop your, you can develop muscle tone if you want to. I mean, yeah. uh, you know. Women uh, muscle builders are certainly an example of that. I've only become aware of them recently. There was a special on uh, HBO, HBO or something yeah. of these. It looked like uh, a photograph of a woman's head and then this man's body with these gigantic muscles. But then when they relax, the body goes back to a feminine I, look. I like the way, I mean, you know, some people go a little bit too far. I like the way women's bodies looked when they're well defined. Mm -hmm. And well developed also, and well. Yes, and it's a good yeah. way to keep in shape too, you know, as you get older, because men have a tendency to really stay in shape a lot better. They're preserved a lot better than women seem to kind of fall apart. <laughs>